Good day everyone. Welcome to the enlightening world of SQL Nexus, a powerful tool designed to aid you in identifying the underlying causes of SQL Server performance issues. In this engaging video, we will explore the capabilities of uh, SQL Nexus and demonstrate how it simplifies the process of loading and analyzing performance data collected by SQL Diag, PSS Diag and SQL Log Scout. By leveraging SQL Nexus, you can significantly reduce the time and effort spent on manual data analysis, empowering you to swiftly resolve SQL Server performance problems. Let's get started. We will first uh, start with um, uh, downloading uh, SQL Nexus. So I'm going to search for um, SQL Nexus. We will click on uh, 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 releases Microsoft SQL Nexus. And then if you look at it, what I'm seeing is like um, 7.23.06.06 is the latest version. So um, uh, what we will basically do is like we will download this SQL Nexus here yeah? and then we will move it to uh, a JBS AG2 server. And then we will have uh, SQL uh, Nexus um, uh, copied over there. And then what we'll do is like we will install all the required prerequisites here. So uh, the prerequisites are .NET Framework 4.8, SQL Sys CLR types, Report Viewer Controller, RML Utilities, and uh, we need an SQL instance for creating the SQL Nexus database. And then uh, SQL Nexus will uh, uh, use the um, um, uh, will use the retrace and things like that, and uh, loads the required uh, data into that particular uh, database. And then we can have a look. So what uh, it basically does is like um, SQL Nexus will uh, uh, load the Excel files into um, SQL Server tables. It also loads the BLG files into SQL server tables it also um, uh, loads some uh, text files such as sql perf stats uh, which basically contains what is uh, uh, currently running on the database server uh, those information which runs in a loop all those things will be um, uh, present in a text file and that will also be loaded into uh, the sql server database once the uh, load completes um, uh, when sql nexus completes the load then we can have a look on these uh, uh, tables manually on the SQL Nexus um, uh, using the uh, inbuilt reports or what we can do is like we can log into the SQL server where the SQL Nexus database is present and then look at um, uh, different tables uh, that has got uh, uh, the data from SQL Log Scout and then we can uh, analyze the data from there as well. So for this video what we'll do is like we will uh, install the prerequisites, open SQL Nexus, and then um, um, uh, we will uh, uh, see the database SQL Nexus getting created. But as far as the data load using uh, PSS Diag data or SQL um, Log Scout data is concerned, we will do it on the next video. This video is specifically going to be installation and configuration of uh, uh, SQL Nexus. And one more thing to keep in mind is like SQL Nexus uh, shouldn't be installed on a production server. It has to be installed either on your desktop, laptop, or on a non-production server. SQL Nexus uh, is kind of heavy duty wherein uh, it loads XCL files, BLG files, and all the text files, and it uses um, resources to a greater extent. So having um, SQL Nexus on a production server will have um, 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 a detrimental effect on the performance of production workload. So uh, always SQL Nexus should be on a non-production server or on your desktop or laptop. So what we'll do now is like, we will download the latest version, which is 7.23.06.06. Scroll down and uh, uh, you will see that here. So just click on it and then let's download it. Now what we'll do is like, we will, um, copy this particular file and then put it in um, a JBS AG2. Um, maybe like we'll create a folder called uh, SQL Nexus on C drive and then we'll put this particular thing there. Let's copy it and then let's put it in JBS AG2. So you need to understand that JBS AG2 is an um, uh, non-production server. It's a, basically a, a lab machine here just for creating these videos. So it's not a production server. So I'm, I'm uh, installing SQL Nexus here. So I'm going to extract this uh, SQL Nexus here. Yeah. 
once this uh, extraction completes, we will do the prerequisites uh, installation using PowerShell script, and then we will uh, invoke SQL Nexus to um, um, uh, complete the prerequisites, the uh, compulsory uh, required prerequisites. So for that, what I'm going to do, instead of doing the installation manually, what I'm going to do is like I'm going to um, uh, use this particular um, PowerShell file and then I'm going to uh, uh, install it using this PowerShell file. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to copy this. Oh, it's copied. So let's... Uh, head back to JBS AG2 and then open PowerShell. Let's make sure like we are opening an administrative uh, uh, PowerShell. So uh, here uh, we are. So I'm going to use this uh, PowerShell ISC. Let's open it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to click on view and then going to click on show script pane and going to you know, just paste that one that whichever I copied from the GitHub link. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, I'm just going to execute this query. Let's see what happens. So if you see here, it basically tells like um, downloading SQL sys CLR types. So I'm going to click on next. I'm going to start the installation here. So what it does is like it um, um, uh, performs the installation one by one and then uh, it just moves on. Instead of uh, uh, doing it manually, um, I would always follow this approach. Okay, so the next one is going to be the report viewer.msi. Let's go ahead and install this one as well. Okay, the installation is going to complete. Once the installation completes, it will uh, go on to the next required prerequisites. So let's wait for this to complete. Okay, so the installation completed for the report viewer. So now it is going to be the RML utility. So let's click on next. I agree to the license agreement and then start the installation for RML utilities, uh, utilities as well. Okay, so the RML utilities are successfully installed. Now it is basically telling like uh, you need to install the Power BI desktop also. I think like it's um, a good we installed Power BI desktop. So I will start the installation for Power BI desktop as well. Just to keep in mind, Power BI Desktop is um, free for you. Uh, it is not like uh, Power BI service where you need to buy and um, uh, buy a license, but Power BI Desktop is kind of uh, free. So you guys can use that, create um, a Power BI reporting PBIX and PBIT file, and then you can reuse it. So let's uh, uh, wait for uh, the Power BI installation to complete, and then we will uh, uh, try um, opening our um, SQL Nexus and see what happens. Okay, so uh, let's select the required uh, uh, language. It's going to be English here. Click on Next. Click on next, accept the license agreement. So I'm going to check this create a desktop shortcut. Let's start the installation. So it is going on. I'll pause this video and then I will resume it once the installation is completed for Power BI. Okay, so uh, the Power BI installation is completed. I'm going to uncheck this launch Microsoft Power BI desktop and then click on finish. So the installation for Power BI is completed. So um, it basically tells like um, um, uh, if you have successfully installed Power BI desktop, choose Y to delete the installation file. Yeah, so I don't need that anymore. So I'm going to delete that. So the um, uh, installation is uh, completed. So if you look at it, it uh, uh, downloaded SQL sys CLR types and installed it 
then uh, it uh, performed the same thing for uh, uh, report viewer control. It installed it, and then RML utilities was installed, and then it uh, was uh, looking at the .NET framework. And since 4.8 was already installed on the database server, it just skipped. For example, if you don't have the latest version of .NET, then it uh, this prerequisite scripts will automatically install it for you. And then at last, it basically installed the Power BI desktop. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to close this and then we have uh, installed the required prerequisites. Let's get into the SQL Nexus uh, application and then let's open this particular file, which is uh, the SQL Nexus application. Let's connect to uh, JBS AG2. And if you see here, as soon as we connected to uh, JBS AG2 using SQL Nexus, we are able to see that a uh, new database called SQL Nexus is created. Yep. So what we can do now is like if we have um, uh, the PSS DAG or um, uh, SQL Log Scout data, then we can uh, import it uh, from uh, uh, SQL Nexus. We will discuss about importing the uh, SQL Log Scout data into SQL Nexus in another video. But for this video, it is just for just uh, installing the prerequisites and then uh, to show how to invoke uh, SQL Nexus. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Jai Hind.